This episode of Dirt Time is brought to you by Top Spray. Top Spray manufactures and installs environmentally responsible erosion and sediment control solutions. Go to topspray.com for more information. Hi, I'm John McCullough and this is Dirt Time, your BMP program. Today's episode deals with stream bank stabilization. You know we're up here in the Canadian Rockies and our job is to stabilize these banks of this Canadian River. So we're going to try a whole bunch of new innovative and bioengineering techniques. We've got a lot to do, so let's get busy and get to it. You know, behind me is the Pemina River. It's a really nice stream up in Alberta. Along this bend, though, we have some problems. We have Highway 734 going through here. Uh, the highway has a big culvert under it. This, this bend has experienced uh, quite a bit of erosion. There were four redirective spurs in here that are very, very old, and they were causing some problems and failures. So we're going to come in here with uh, some innovative new redirective and resistive type techniques, a lot of bioengineering and willow, and we can see if we can uh, repair this bank. Okay. How are you doing? I'm John McCullough. Well, what what we're doing? demonstrating here is we've used geotextile fabrics like crazy, yeah, okay? <laughs> we use them all the time. We know everything about them. What we're demonstrating here next to the veins is we're demonstrating bioengineering. What we want to do is we don't want to put anything down that's going to inhibit root growth because in that first year, we're going to have willow roots. You've seen the red fibrous roots. They're going to be growing back into the slope. So the willow roots are going to be like a live growing geotextile filter fabric. They hold the soils together, all the fines. What we got here is an opportunity to demonstrate how this can work without using fabrics. But we have no problem with this possibly being, between this vein and this vein, this being an LPSDP, uh, a toe using our new funny rock, right along here, and backfilled behind it will either be brush layering, brush layering, or live siltation. This is an example of an LPSTP. This longitudinal peak stone toe is about is usually built to the elevation of bank full discharge, in this case about one meter above the water elevation right now. The beauty of LPSTP is they're a resistive technique along the bank of a bank, the edge of the bank, and they allow you to backfill behind them, do bioengineering or any of the other things you want to do. LPSTPs realign streams. You don't have to run your riprap to the top of the bank. They're a very cost effective and environmentally friendly way to restore stream banks. This little piece of water in here, I don't know what it will do during high flows. It concern, this is the one area that concerns me. But it, comes, it could come in here it and could, slam into here between the veins. It, it could hit right here. If you're standing on the road and if you look underneath the guardrail and you see water, you need to put riprap in. If we had a guardrail here, you'd okay. see it. Okay, you know, because that means you're that close. With veins and redirective, you're always going to lose a little bit of bank. I think you make a good point here for moving the riprap from there to here. We did a job in uh, San Vicente Creek. The engineer had three and four foot diameter rock. The problem was the flow was coming right into the creek and, and then those were keyed in. I dug a keyway down six feet. I mean, I was losing four foot rocks down the keyway. And then it was double thick. And so what we did is the water was coming in like this and hitting that riprap. We came in and I built a vein right upstream, one vein, just like that number one. And I built it, my biggest rock was this size. Now, those haven't moved yet 
after three seasons. Right now, this thing at higher water, this thing wants to come off and it, those bubbles will be slamming in here. With our next vein, that'll take care of the higher water. Right now, it's fine. This is a classic example of how a rock vein works. They, uh, they point out into the stream, 30 degrees upstream. They start at bank full discharge. The highest point is at bank full discharge and they dip down into the bottom of the stream. So the toe of the vein is actually underwater down there. The action of the vein dipping down into the river is at all flow elevations, the water feels the vein and rolls off of it. So now water that was coming into the bank like this feels the vein and rolls off. So it takes the pressure off the bank. And I mentioned bank full discharge also. You know, last week we were down here and this river was high. The river was all the way down to above these willows. The water was right to here. That was about eight inches above bank full discharge. So bank full discharge is right about down here where my feet are and that should be the high height of the veins. All of our structures are designed for bank full discharge. Now bank full discharge is the water surface elevation of a stream. It usually uh, reoccurs every year, maybe every two years. When the water reaches bank full elevation, it's got the maximum amount of energy and it starts eating away the bank. Now as the water was coming down, it used to come down here and it eat right into the bank, right at bank full elevation. That deepest part of the channel is called the thaw wag. As soon as that vein was built, we moved the thaw wag out 20% of the, of the uh, bank full width. That's what redirective does. It takes that high velocity, moves it away from the bend. When these veins are too high during flood stages, they cause any, any obstruction up here will cause eddying and, and erosion. And that has a, a nice big bump on it there. We've got to remove about a dozen or two dozen of those rocks that are too high. This is the design elevation. It's right at the level where the perennial vegetation grows. So this was our design and I want to mark this vein at bank full elevation so we can come in and remove some of that rock. They're just getting a little too high. In fact, I'll give them a little bit of leeway here. Yeah, I don't want them much higher than that. Okay, let's go talk to them. Let's... Hey Dale, how you doing? All right, good to see you. Looks to me like the bank full discharge, we're getting a little high. You see my orange flag? I put an orange flag on it. That's about bank full there. In fact, that's still a little high. The thing I wanna to demonstrate to uh, when DFO comes out here and a lot of the consultants and stuff is that these, especially these uh, longitudinal peak stone toes do not have to be all the way to the top of the bank. Between eight and 10 o'clock, we can have willows laying along the road. We can have willows loaded on a trailer. They should be in the water. They got to be in the water. We won't have them on a trailer ever. Well, Did you bundle them up? Yeah. You, You're gonna go you are it. going to see okay. the willows. We're going to go out and uh, check out the willows they cut. Uh, apparently, they got them sitting in a excavated pond up here. So we're going to either uh, accept them or reject them. There's a little bit of concern that they were delivered on a trailer. They were covered with a tarp and uh, they may have dried out. Huh? It's scary because I don't know if they yeah. got to that point where they died or not. Oh. Right. I'd rather not risk it, Mike, just because I don't know how they were handled. I don't know how long they sat out in the, how long they sit out in the wind like this. You know, wind is the, almost the worst thing. And you see that's, I wouldn't want to plant that. We're going to reject this willow. Uh, we don't quite know how it was cut and handled. Willows dry out really fast. They, they have to be cut, kept moist, kept in the shade, and then soaked. Now what we're looking for is not necessarily a branch like this at all. We want to, we, out of this thing, we might take one branch from here up to here, and then you remove all the rest of this stuff. It's not quite the way we want it. It hasn't been handled the way we want it, and uh, I don't know when it, when it got in the water and started soaking. So we're gonna cut some fresh stuff. It's a good thing we came up here today. You know, the, uh, there was a couple of changes made to the site. We're gonna have 70 people out here uh, building bioengineering projects, but we had to have the site ready. We had to have the veins in place and uh, all, the, all the heavy equipment and rock work done. We made a few modifications in the field. Uh, we actually took one vein out. We had to change them and move them a little bit and adjust them 
because of water quality issues. Hopefully if we can get all this built in here and ready for brush layering, then when the attendees come, we'll be able to lay the willow and build the rest of those banks back up. So I think everybody's lined out on what they need to do for the next day. And then the next time we come up here, we're gonna be with 70 people and we're gonna be working our little tails off, putting in those willows and doing the bioengineering and stuff. So uh, let's, get, let's get, on, get back onto town and get our pr presentations ready. Uh, just a couple hours later, boy, the weather changes quick up here in Alberta. I hope we can uh, get our willows in before this thing gets snowed in for the winter. Oh, wow, wonderful weather. Well, here we are first day for our hands-on training. We all just got off the bus. There's uh, 65 or 70 of us here. You can see us milling around trying to get our, uh, our safety gear on and stuff. Uh, and I heard that uh, the, the preparation was made for our bioengineering. But I'll be anxious to kind of go over there and see how things are. A lot of, a lot of activity here. It ought to, be a, ought to be a great day. It ought to be something anyway. Let's see how it goes. Right, uh, today we're gonna, we're gonna be doing some uh, bioengineering uh, today, this is vein one. Vein two is not quite complete yet. The keyways out there. Between vein three and four, I want to do the geotextile soil wrap, and I'm going to demonstrate how to build the brush layering. Okay, everybody hear me? Brush layering is going to be built between vein one and uh, vein two. We'll use a little bit longer stuff. We'll use the the two to three meter bundles for uh, this brush layering. What we want to do is we want to have uh, 10 branches minimum per meter. And what you want to do is you want to have the branches sticking out into the daylight a bit. Now you can stagger the branches quite a bit. You can lock them in a little bit if you think you're going to get a little more uh, geotechnical strength. If, if this one was planted down in here, see the way it's dipping down, I'd choose to plant it like that. So it's sort of dipping up. Willow love this kind of free draining soil. Sometimes if you had your compost machine or you had some topsoil around here, you might uh, throw a little bit of topsoil in here. In that topsoil is also some of the biologics, the mycorrhizae, fungi, bacteria and stuff, all those beneficial things might not be in down in here in your excavation, but we know that they're up in here. So periodically you might grab some of that stuff and, and throw that in also. We're gonna get a great coverage with these. The preparation's good. I like the way Dale's got the bench dipping back in. A couple of uh, volunteers down here to help spread the rest of this out, okay? I want to put in, you know, a couple of pounds of fertilizer down per acre. Maybe if you put in a, a pound per thousand square feet or so, we would be okay. When we put some soil down, we'll put another layer of fertilizer down. As the roots grow through, they're going to be able to at least grab some nutrients. You know, they think they're going to drown. Yeah, we've already scared them, okay? And so they're going to be putting out roots now like crazy. Plus, they know it's wintertime. They've already shed their leaves, so they're not even thinking about fruiting bodies and leafing. They're thinking of roots right now, and that's what we want them to be thinking. Think root, okay? We've laid the branches down so that a foot or two sticks out, will stick out above the soil. We try to lay 10 branches per meter. Uh, sometimes if it's a geotechnically unstable slope, you might want to put in six branches per foot or 18 or 20 branches per meter. We'll backfill next with about 12 to 16 inches worth of soil. As we put a little soil in here, we're gonna water this in, just like transplanting your house plants. We'll put the soil down, compact it slightly, and we're gonna start our next brush layer right about at this elevation. As a little insurance policy here, we came in and put a little uh, slow release 
slow release fertilizer down just in case this subsoil material has no available nutrients. We want to give this willow every chance it can to grow. Get this thing backfilled, watered in, and, and get it going on this. Let's see how it goes. Right here, we'll start our next lift. So bring it right out to here, right about like that. So we need to visualize where the edge of the bank's gonna be. And then from that point, the bank's gonna go up on an angle like this, and then we want the willows dipping back down. There, he's getting it there. Yeah. That's the way we want it. Oh, yeah. That'll do it for this site. We come up one more and I think let's do one one good 16 inch lift, compacted 16 inches, dipping back. So our next step here is to, uh, we got a little bit of topsoil here. So let's put a little bit of uh, good soil now on top and encase the willow so they'll root better. The next lift, I want them to come up about 16 inches. Okay, Dale, go up about 20 inches to get 16. Ideally, build the face out of some cobbly stuff so it, it falls at its natural angle of repose up about 16 inches. And that's the face of the bank now that's gonna be dipping back quite deeply. So the next brush layering dips way back. We got a better chance of having our basal ends down in some moisture the deeper we can get them. Boy, that's a good brush layering application too. Dale put a little topsoil in there and then we'll go back and cover the rest of it with gravel now. By soaking the willow, treating it this way, watering it in, brush layering like this, I expect 90% plus uh, survival. You know, the beauty of a lot of these bioengineering techniques is we don't need special fill. We don't need granular backfill. We don't need engineered backfill. The beauty of it is you use the native material. Well, so right now he's just using native gravel to build up our layers because that's what's existing here and willows are growing in that material. Uh, this site's gonna be absolutely perfect. We've got using our native material, we don't have to reach compaction and we've got a little bit of topsoil to sprinkle right. on the willows. So you can see they did two lifts of brush layering. We're gonna do one more lift. We're gonna lay down willow at uh, 10 branches per meter. So just put a little bit of soil up on top of here and uh, Michael water it in and this will be our last lift. A little black dirt just on the willows and then the rest of it will be gravelly stuff. This is the, the top of the bank now is right here. We'll run back up to there. And then we'll just rely on erosion control to take care of the rest of the erosion. The water, by the time it comes up here, it's gonna be double bank full and these willows will be growing in and everything will be taken care of.